Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at the Cursus Eteritas from Noise Engineering. The Cursus Eteritas, uh, we'll call it the CI for short, is a digital oscillator that generates a wavetable via three different possible functions, uh, but it shares the same control set for each method. Uh, this not only makes for a really wide range of tonality, but also an intuitive and consistent set of controls. Starting with the function types, there's a switch corresponding CV input to select between uh, Dobashi, Fourier, and Walsh functions. And while uh, they're all functions to generate ultimately a wavetable, they do so in a very different way and thus sound very different. Uh, we'll listen to some examples in a minute, but to vastly oversimplify it, uh, Dobushi kind of sounds sawtooth-ish, Fourier is sine wave-like, and Walsh sounds kind of square wavy. Um, there's a pitch control and a corresponding one volt per octave input uh, to set the pitch or the fundamental frequency. Uh, the center control determines the uh, harmonic that is used to, uh, but used by the function to create the wavetable. Width determines how many harmonics will be introduced. So turning width up will create more harmonics. Uh, structure uh, is a bipolar control that controls the order of harmonics that are included. So at 12 o'clock you get both even and odd harmonics. And as you turn left, uh, it will be more of just even harmonics and to the right more of just odd harmonics. Um, the edge control, when turned up, will introduce aliasing, but due to the fact that the CI uses a variable sample rate based on the pitch control, the aliasing that gets introduced is harmonically related to the fundamental, not inharmonic aliasing like that's typical with a fixed sample rate digital system, which most are. Um, so you get these really awesome digital distortions that uh, are harmonically related to the, the pitch of the tone. It's an exceptionally cool control. The fold knob introduces uh, an amount of folding but with a digital wave shaper. And the tilt control controls a tonal balance of the harmonics. Um, at 12 o'clock, the lower and higher harmonics are at equal volume. Turning left will increase the volume of lower harmonics and turning higher will increase the uh, upper harmonics. Uh, it's almost like a, like a DJ EQ, high shelf EQ, except it tracks the pitch. It's not like a fixed EQ frequency. So uh, if you tilt to the left and make the lower harmonics louder and you turn the pitch up, um, it won't get duller. Um, it'll just track with, with the frequency, which is really neat. Uh, and lastly, there's a range switch and a CV input, which will offset the pitch range in two octave chunks and a sync input for hard sync. Uh, that's basically the panel and the controls. Um, all the CV inputs uh, are basically just offsets for the panel controls. So if you wanted to uh, control this with a sequencer, you usually turn the knob mostly down and modulate up or down uh, LFOs, turn the knob kind of in the middle. Um, anyway, let's jump right into some examples uh, listening to the three different function types and how they sound. All right, let's start with Fourier mode here. Uh, we're in the uh, alto range. Um, probably want to put some headphones on if you're listening to laptop speakers you may not hear anything right now um, well I'll just sort of sweep through some of the controls first and let you hear how some of these things interact uh, in this mode so starting with that edge control that introduces the aliasing but the cool thing as you'll hear that aliasing is always tracking the fundamental so you never end up with inharmonic aliasing Very, very cool control. Uh, center again, this chooses the center harmonic from the fundamental that's used to build the, the wavetable through the selected function. It can almost sound like a resonant bandpass filter, but you can hear it moving through the harmonics. And again, width chooses the number of harmonics, so right now with width all the way down, we're pretty much just listening to a single harmonic. So we turn this up. You can hear more of the harmonics. Structure again balances between even and odd. Sort of the fold. Lastly, that tilt control, which you can hear a lot better with some harmonics. And 
again, this tracks with the pitch, so it's not going to get duller as the pitch goes up. Like a normal shelving EQ might. switch again goes between three different two octave sets. The bass can actually get quite low. Not necessarily like low LFO speeds, but like low audio rate LFO. And treble can get quite high. Listen to the Yoshi. Hear this in general be quite a bit buzzier and edgier. Lastly, the Walsh. Alright, let's get into some patches with some modulation. So there's a natural tendency to just want to modulate all the things with the CI uh, because everything sounds cool and there's inputs for everything. Um, and that's great. Um, but I kind of wanted to show some of the more um, subtle sounds you can get out of this without just tons of modulation of, of every parameter. Um, so right now I'm going to focus on just modulating the center uh, parameter. Uh, that tends to be an important one uh, and has a lot of interesting sounds you don't always get out of other things. Um, so starting here, I just have us in uh, Fourier mode. Structure turned all the way to the even harmonics. Center is kind of down and width is all the way down because I want to just focus on the one harmonic uh, and that's what center is going to sweep us through. Um, folds up just a tiny bit to give a little bit of uh, folding. So I'm just going to add a cycling mass envelope here into the center control. much motion that adds. One of my favorite things though is actually modulating the center control at an audio rate uh, where that audio rate pitch is tuned to some kind of interval, musical interval of this pitch. So the Rene that's controlling Cursus here is also controlling this DPO. I'm taking the sine wave out of here uh, and going to mix that in. So now you're going to hear center audio rate modulated.
if we put that envelope back in as well with the audio rate modulation. And obviously if we put that under a VCA control or something, we could be... Cool. Okay, here's a slight evolution on that last patch. Um, we're in Dobishi mode this time, um, and we're using the um, Moleco voltage block to modulate a couple parameters here, but I'm focusing just on the kind of harmonic um, motion parameters. Um, so center, uh, structure, modulating between even and, and odd harmonics, um, the width and the number of harmonics, um, and also the edge control just to add some of that cool uh, harmonic aliasing in. Um, and that can give us quite a bit of motion. Without changing the pitch. And if I bring that same audio rate modulation in, this time to the fold parameter, really get some cool motion. If we get that pitch sequence to start moving again too. Listen to a couple of the different functions here. Fourier is a little more aggressive with that audio rate modulation on the fold. Took the audio rate modulation out, bring it back in. With Walsh, the audio rate modulation is almost a little too much. wanted to, we could get modulation of the algo in here. So let's uh, wrap this up with one final modulate all the things patch because we can't not do that when we're playing with the curses. All right, so our final evolution on that last patch, um, we simply added CV control via the Moleco voltage block to algorithm select and also the range select. Um, and I've added oscillator sync um, from the DPO. Um, I'm going to play around with adding some more to the fold modulation, um, but this gives us a ton of motion. I'm not even going to bother changing the pitch sequence. I threw a little bit of reverb on there because reverb always makes everything sound better. Um, and yeah, enjoy. Um, I really hope you check out the Cursus Ceteritas. It really blew me away. Um, it's really, really fun to play with. It's an amazing voice, wide range of tones. Um, thanks for tuning in.